Hi, I'm Eric Anderson. And I'm Ivy Zhuang. We are software engineers on the gRPC team at Google. We work most on the Java implementation of gRPC and Proxylas service mesh. As an overview, gRPC supports a variety of languages and platforms with rich features, making it perfect for microservices and distributed applications. gRPC stands for gRPC Remote Procedure Call. It is a CNCF incubating project, which is the same open source foundation as Kubernetes. Fun fact, gRPC also stands for our golden retriever mascot, Pancakes. Let me first work with through a Hello World example in gRPC. This is the product file that defines the API of the service called Greeter and the request and the response message data structures. For those of you who are new to protocol buffers, it is an easy and efficient mechanism to serialize structured data so that it can be transmitted over wire. Specifically, at compile time, the protobuf generator generates code to interface with language-specific runtime libraries and the serialization format for the data that is written to the network connection. Next, you write your application class based on the protobuf generated source code that handles a gRPC request. As a demo service here, we attach hello string and echo the name field in the request. Then we write the code to start the server application. The main class will start a gRPC server that is listening on port 50051 for client connection when it starts running. The last piece of code is the main class on the client side. It sends a request through a gRPC channel towards the gRPC server that we just spun up. It logs the response data. This concludes our mini demo. This demo is simple, but this is exactly the same predecessor library at Google that supports extremely high QBS at the 10 to the 10th power. With that in mind, let's look at some of the features of gRPC. gRPC is available in many languages. There's Go, Java, C++, Python, and many more. gRPC can communicate across languages with a service definition and generated code, making the experience natural in each language. It is also available on many platforms, whether running on Linux, Mac, Windows, or on mobile devices running iOS and Android. gRPC can communicate between them all. You get to choose the language and platforms for your system. gRPC is built on HTTP2, which is an IETF standard that makes it compatible with many load balancers and proxies. HTTP2 reduces the number of TCP connections, is binary, and includes header compression, all of which help make gRPC high performance reduce latency, and make better use of resources. But gRPC also supports direct client-side load balancing. So when appropriate, it can run without the proxies, reducing the number of components to manage and increasing performance. This applies even with service meshes. gRPC has support to directly communicate with centralized configuration and service discovery servers like Istio and Google Cloud's Traffic Director that lets it participate in a mesh without the headache and cost of sidecar proxies. As you learn gRPC, you'll find it is great for microservices. gRPC's support for monitoring systems allows them to alert when your system is unhealthy. And tracing system support lets you understand and debug your system as it grows. Tools like interceptors allow you to share functionality across services like authentication and logging. gRPC has more advanced features like streaming, which allows multiple requests and responses within an RPC. This allows structuring the RPC in a way more performant for your application. The feature list goes on. gRPC has become very widely adopted since its 1.0 release in 2016. It is run at scale at numerous companies and is continually tested, fuzzed, and benchmarked to preserve its strong stability. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you get started or refreshed with gRPC. You can now check out these websites or watch other videos in the playlist.